hi everyone in this video i am going to tell you about the derivation of ids versus vds so when you are considering this subject and from this first unit point of view this derivation plays a major role okay because from this onwards a lot of uh, equations and formulas are going to be derived and previously we have discussed several fabrication steps that uh, among those fabrication steps one will definitely come in the final exam like a p-well fabrication process or n-well fabrication process or it may be an n-mos or p-mos fabrication steps okay that means it may be an individual transistor or it may be a cmos device along with that another important uh, question will be ids versus vds derivation ids versus vds derivation so what we are going to do we are going to calculate the vds uh, ids current from drain to source equation in terms of vds because vds is the voltage that is applied between drain and source which is responsible for the moment of current between source and drain okay so now let us start the derivation derivation is quite uh, lengthy but it is very easy if you understand the concept really see here this is the structure of the mass transistor in three dimensional where it is having the length see this is the source terminal this is drain terminal and this one is the center we have oxal layer with a thickness d capital d oxal layer thickness capital d above which we are having the polysilicon that terminal is nothing but a gate terminal so if you are taking the channel which is existed between source and drain that is having the length l as shown in the figure and w as width okay so we have three different parameters from this figure we have to understand l is the length of the channel W is the width of the channel and D is thickness of the oxide. D is nothing but thickness of the oxide. Okay, this is what the parameters we have that are uh, shown by this diagram. Now, we are going to derive the IDS in terms of IDS in terms of VDS. Okay. IDS in terms of VDS. As VDS increases, IDS also increases. Okay, now, uh, before going, uh, start before starting this derivation, we should know uh, two voltages are there, VGS and VDS. VGS is nothing but between gate to source that is used to, that is the purpose of VGS. VGS is used for the charge inversion which is used to create the channel between source and drain. The channel is having length L and width W. VDS is responsible for the flow of current between source and drain. That means the electrons are moving from source to drain and the current is moving from drain to source. Okay. So, the first, first, we can write the drain to source current IDS, we can write it as the charge induced in the channel charge induced in channel charge induced in channel we are writing it as qc divided by electron transit time electron transit time electron transit time indicated by tau okay or tau we can also say it as tau ds okay tau time taken by the electron to move from source to drain tau, tau sd we can call it as tau sd okay so where tau sd is nothing but time taken by the electron time taken by the electron to move from source to drain source to drain so that the current will move in the opposite direction that is from drain to source that's why it is ids okay so charge in use in the channel that depends upon the applied voltage vgs and the capacitance we have across that particular uh, polysilicon now the tau sd we are writing it as tau sd is equal to tau sd is nothing but what we can write length uh, time is equal to distance by 
velocity we know that the uh, standard notation of the time is nothing but distance by velocity how much distance that the electron has to travel length of the channel so length of the channel is the distance that the electron has to travel between source and rain divided by length distance by velocity velocity of the electron with which it is moving velocity so this velocity v is proportional to up the applied voltage or electric field is responsible for the movement in the electron okay that means the electron has to that the electron can move faster rate or slow that depends upon the applied electric field so the velocity is proportional to applied electric field between drain and source so if you remove this proportionality constant it becomes e into mu into e eds so eds is nothing but electric field electric field between source and drain electric field between source and drain so what is the relation between electric field and voltage so eds is equal to vds per unit length l eds is equal to vds per unit length l now tau sd is equal to l by l by c what is l by l by v v we can write as c after this we can write v as velocity is equal to mu into eds is nothing but mu by mu into vds by l so here tau s is equal to velocity this one so mu into vds by l that is equal to l square mu vds this is what the electron transit time take it as tau sd okay so what is tau sd l square by mu into vds l square is nothing but l is nothing but length of the channel by mu permeability and divided by vds here mu is nothing but permeability permeability okay therefore that mu n for permeability for electrons permeability for holes so mu n is equal to 650 centimeter square per volt second and mu p is equal to 240 centimeter square per volt second okay this is for electrons electron mobility and this is for the hole mobility okay so this is what the permeability now using this we are going to calculate uh, what is that charge induced in the channel okay now see here in the denominator part we have calculated tau sd but in the numerator we have charge induced in the channel that we can calculate in two ways for non saturation region and again for saturation region so let us go for non saturation region calculation so that we can go for the cal calculation of saturation next so non saturation region non saturation region what do you mean by non saturation region in the characteristics of the enhancement mode and mos transistor i told you three different regions so if you draw the characteristics of this this is vds and this one is the ids so until this particular voltage vds is equal to vgs minus vt until this particular voltage the transistor is set to be operated in non linear region we call this region as non linear region non linear region or we can call it as a resistor region or we can call it as a uh, what is it non non saturation region okay so we, there are three different names for this region non linear region or uh, uh, what is that sorry it is a linear region non saturation region linear region because it increases with respect to the voltage the current increases with respect to the voltage so we can call it as a linear region or resistor region resistor region <coughs> or we can call it as a non saturation region and above which we are treating it as 
saturation region okay and all this bottom part is nothing but cutoff region okay so we are saying that now the transistor is said to be operated in the linear region or we can say it is a resistor region or we can say it is a non saturation region now the charge induced in the channel qc we need to write that qc is equal to epsilon insulator epsilon naught into eg into eg per unit length and area that means per unit area so epsilon insulator epsilon naught eg into wl this is the charge induced in the channel per unit area <coughs> we can call it as charge induced charge induced in the channel per unit area charge induced in the channel per or per unit area okay so we know epsilon naught is not, epsilon naught is nothing but free space permittivity epsilon r is nothing but our relative permittivity here we are taking the insulator or oxide layer in between these two at the gate terminal so this is nothing but a relative permittivity of this insulator eg is nothing but electric field at the gate w is nothing but width of the channel l is nothing but length of the channel what do you mean by eg how we can write eg eg is nothing but electric field gate electric field electric field at gate electric field at the gate how can you write this electric field eg so eg is equal to eg is nothing but voltage per unit length voltage per and the electric field is equal to voltage per length so this voltage is nothing but we are taking vgs minus vt which is nothing but effect to gate voltage minus vds by 2 divided by thickness of the oxide d <coughs> what do you mean by vds by 2 vds by 2 is the average drain to source voltage average drain to source voltage average drain to source voltage because the transistor is set to be operated in non saturation region so for that we need to set some vds voltage which is lesser than this vgs minus vt see in this region what is the condition it is vds is less than vgs minus vt so in order to satisfy this condition we are taking the vds value as VG, vds by 2 okay average voltage when you are uh, taking the difference between these two voltages effect to electric field will come which is vgs minus vt minus vds by 2 divided by d what do you mean by d d is nothing but thickness of the thickness of the oxide at the polysilicon <coughs> okay nothing but at the gate terminal now substitute this here in this equation take it as equation 2 okay substitute this eg in equation 2 then we will get so qc is equal to epsilon naught epsilon insulator eg or w into l vgs minus vt minus vds by 2 divided by d divided by d okay now this is the charge in use in the channel this is what the charge in use in the channel but what we need in uh, from the ids formula ids is equal to qc by tau we know ids is equal to qc by tau sd so that qc is nothing but what do you mean by qc this one is the qc and what is the tau sd let us substitute both of them <coughs> so that is equal to what is qc epsilon naught epsilon insulator wl 
into VGS minus VT minus VDS by 2 divided by D into what is tau SD? Tau SD is nothing but what is tau SD? Tau SD is nothing but already we have taken from the equation 1. Tau SD is equal to uh, L square by mu into VDS. L square by mu into VDS. Okay. So before going to this, we ha also have another relation. We can also write we can also write charge induced in the channel is due to the capacitance Cg into gate to source voltage VGS. So QC is equal to Cg into VGS. This is also another relation that we can also uh, substitute here so that <coughs> this equation can be satisfied. Okay. So if you take this that is equal to from this equation what we can write see ideas is equal to this one so ideas is equal to epsilon naught epsilon insulator mu w by d into l l square is there l is there so the ll get cancelled vgs minus vt minus VDS by 2 into we have one more VDS here. This is what the equation we have for the IDS. Okay. Now take this entire term. <coughs> take this entire term as some K. Okay. Some constant K. Then let k is equal to epsilon naught epsilon insulator um, mu by d okay so therefore ids is equal to k into w by l vgs minus vt into VGS minus VT minus VDS by 2 into VDS. This is the uh, which equation? Third equation. Now, assume another parameter K into W by L as beta. Assume K into W by L as beta. That implies IDS is equal to beta into VGS minus VT minus VDS by 2 into VDS. Take it as fourth equation. Here we are going to derive the IDS formula in four different uh, parameters like K, beta, CG and C0. Now introduce, introduce another parameter another parameter that is CG. What do you mean by CG? CG is nothing but gate capacitance. CG is nothing but gate capacitance. Okay. So, I will continue the derivation in the next video. Gate capacitance and as well as gate capacitance per unit area. These are the two parameters that I am going to derive the IDS equation.